In this chapter, you will see that there are a number of alternative ways of importing files from local hard drives and hard disk drives, as well as file-based external devices and digital cameras. Let's start with a new feature in Avid Studio called Watch Folders. Watch Folders is a feature that automatically scans and imports all of your important media files from your most used locations. It is constantly watching for updated media files and will add new files it recognizes to your library. You can define watch folders when you start Avid Studio for the first time. You can also customize or change which folders are watched at any time. Simply click Setup, Control Panel, Watch Folders. You can then add or remove folders and define media types that will be used often for storing and capturing your media files. The beauty of handling files this way is that you don't have more than one step in adding files to the library. Whenever you add a media file to a predefined watch folder, it will automatically appear in the library. As a reminder, you should only add watch folders from a device that is always attached to your system and fast enough to handle video files. The reason is simple. If you remove a storage device that is on the watch folder list, it will no longer be able to find the files for the library. The thumbnails in the library will show missing data links until the device is reconnected to your computer or the watch folder is removed from the watched list. Watch folders makes it easy to keep your library up to date with all your new media files. Quick Import is a way of quickly importing a file from a device not defined as watched. Click here to have direct access to Windows Explorer and bring your file into the library. Another new feature is using My Computer with access to all local disks attached to the system. You can then select media files and either link or make copies of the original files and import to a new location. You can also keep or delete originals and decide whether to ignore duplicates of files with the same names. This is also where you can add metadata terms, which are simply search terms that you can use later to find files quickly based on search words you have applied to these files. You can also make copies with new names instead of always using the original naming conventions. So let's move some files by selecting My Computer. I have files on a removable USB jump drive that I would like copied to my video drive. This is important because the jump drive is not fast enough for real-time video playback. Select the jump drive. Check the box of the file or files you would like to copy. Now is the time to change the Import To folder and add subfolders if desired. I will leave it in the default, which is my system hard drive. It is fast enough for video and cannot be removed, potentially causing missing data messages like a removed jump drive might. In the Mode tab, select Copy. I don't want to delete the file on the jump drive after it is copied. I will not ignore duplicates just in case someone used the same names for different files. And I will use the original names. That's it. Push the Start Import button and the process will begin. Upon completion, your files will be available in the library for your movie. Scan for Media allows you to look for and link to media on attached devices. 
select a series of folders from one or more devices. Add any metadata search words you desire. Below, you can also decide if you want to narrow your search to certain file types using these format buttons. That's it. Simply push the scan and import button. All recognized files in these locations will be added to the library. The workflow for capturing from file-based video cameras or digital photo cameras is also quite simple. File-based devices actually have storage built into them. When you capture or import from them, you are actually making copies of their files. Plug your camera into the USB port using the cable that was supplied by your camera manufacturer. Turn the camera on. Then select the Import tab. I have attached a digital photo camera here. It has recognized it as a Nikon L12. Select the L12 tab. This will start scanning the memory or internal storage within the camera itself for media. It will show all recognized files in the tree view. Using the same techniques you already learned in this chapter on selecting and copying files as well as adding metadata, select the files to be copied to the library and push the Start Import button. It is that simple. There may be times you would like to capture a snapshot from your video camera or other device for use in emails or websites. Once again, Avid Studio makes this easy. Hook up your video camera or other devices as shown earlier in this chapter. Select the Snapshot button. You will see that your device is recognized here. The Importer Video Playback window shows you the image that will be captured for your snapshot. As before, select your Input To folder, add any metadata, and give it a file name. Click Capture Frame, and that's it. You now have a still picture that can be used in your movie, or online in your emails, or other online social outlets. Creating a stop motion animation with inanimate objects is easy using Avid Studio's stop motion feature. It works the same way as Snapshot, except you will capture a series of frames moving an object slightly for each captured frame. Then playing these frames back in the movie timeline will give you the illusion of the object moving itself. You can add sound effects and music and create your own animated movie. Hello, I'm Paul Holtz from Class on Demand. This introductory chapter gave you a quick look at the creative power and flexibility of Avid Studio. If you'd like to learn more about creating your movies with the same high quality production polish used in the latest Hollywood blockbusters, then order your copy of Class on Demand's Complete Training for Avid Studio on Avid's website. On behalf of Avid and Class on Demand, thanks for watching.